Okay, ladies, we're gonna start. I'm sorry about the chair on the way. For those of you who can't see me, huh? Welcome. Chodesh Tov to everyone. Besorot Tovot, that's what stands for Shvadesh. Shiyu Besorot Tovot, Shini Besor Besorot Tovot, Bezat Hashem. We should hear good news. We should have good tidings. Bezat Hashem. Everyone should have Yeshuot. We're gonna dedicate the Shiyu today to, um, um, it should be Leilui Nishmat. Um, Yosef Rafael uh, Ben Chaim. Um, it should be as a schut for Refua for Yaakov Ben Rachel, Avram Ber Ben Rachel, sorry, Yaakov Ben Rachel, Rachel, Yaakov Ben Rachel, Avram Ber Ben Rachel, Leah Bat Yehudit, Yosef Azriel Ben Chaim Michal, Zechariah Yishai Ben. Shandel, she have a refuah shlema, mayam batavor adasa, and Yosef, did I say Yosef? Yosef, I said Yosef is Rebbe Nechaya Michal, and Shimon Merikfar, it's called Chatsiba, she was schut for my children, Chaim ben Karen, Shlom ben Karen, Freda ben Karen, it should be a schut for everybody here, for all their children, the zivugim agunim, the sorot tovot, yeshuot, nechamot, refuot, everything that you need, a kadosh makush and answer. Anytime women get together, and they learn together, it's an opportunity to really, you know, unite. And with Zat Hashem also to Daven, Rabbi Yimmi always says that we have tremendous koach, and um, we have to utilize that koach when we're united, when we're together, when we're learning together. It's a big schut, and it brings Yeshuot for Am Yisrael. So thank you all for being here. I know it's busy sometimes in the mornings, everyone's rushing the kids, shopping, whatever you need to get done before everyone gets home at like one o'clock, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> but uh, we hope that Vezrat uh, Hashem should be uh, an inspiration. You should get chizuk from it and Vezrat uh, Hashem should be a chodesh tov for everybody. So I don't know if some of you um, heard me. I did speak yesterday. There's a Nishmat group that I'm a part of. We try to say Nishmat in the mornings. Um, 8.50 in the morning for those of you here in Israel. Some people in the States, they, they do it also morning. So if you can't make it in the morning, every morning, 8.50. It's about 10 minutes. We just say Nishmat. We say Mizmor Litoda eight times and a few uh, Tfilot. Toby joins us every morning. Um, excuse me. And there's an Inyan to say Mizmor Litoda eight times. Or Rush says it brings you Shu'ot because it's like Lamar Amin you know, eight. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, Naomi Greenberg, she helped mm-hmm. start it in the States and it's going on for a couple of years. Um, and there they do it at, at our time, it's 2.55 p.m. Except for Sundays, they start a little later. So people can sleep later there. <laughs> it's 8.30 there, so it's 3.30 here on Sundays. And it's really beautiful. And sometimes they, they have, we have speakers. So I spoke yesterday for the Nishmat group. So I don't know. Yeah, we're trying to get 40 leads. It's not a commitment, but if you can join, join us. Yeah, if I could have everybody, well, can we pass around like a, a paper and pen? Sure. Yeah, I have a pen here. Yeah. And then everybody have their numbers, and then I'll send you my contact, or if you didn't get my contact information, and you'll connect with me, and you'll be able to hear about the, the sheer, the, you know, the, and the gatherings that we have. So I do, I have. Oh, it says that on the. No, it says Nishmat Kol Chai and Mizmolet for that eight times. It says that. Yeah, email, WhatsApp. You have. <laughs> Where did you see it? Which chat? You join the Nishma chat? Okay, so it's not, we say Nishma once, not eight times. <laughs> that would be kind of hard. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're going to start. So Rosh Chodesh, first of all, I wanted to talk about um, Rosh Chodesh, because Rosh Chodesh really is our special day. We have an opportunity on Rosh Chodesh to really be connected to Kash Baruch Hu because it says that initially the Shvatim, there are 12 Shvatim, there are 12 months. So each one of the Shvatim was synonymous with one of the months. What happened was during Chet Egel, <clears throat> the Jewish people sinned. They did Chet Egel, and um, they went to the women, and they asked the men went to the women. They asked them for their jewelry, and we know that the women refused, right? And in that schut, the Kadosh Baruch Hu gave them um, gave them Rosh Chodesh. And so on Rosh Chodesh, it's our little mini Yom 
And now you have an excuse not to do laundry, not to do any ironing or sewing. I don't know if we do that these days. We send it to the seamstress. Um, and, you know, malacha that, you know, like I guess dishes wouldn't count as malacha, but if you want to, you don't have to do the dishes. <laughs> and you should treat yourself, you know. It's a, it's a time for hitchachut. We as women need that. And we know that we're based on the moon because our cycle is based on, you know, in the month. And so we're very connected to the Chodesh. And so we need to sometimes pamper ourselves. We don't do that enough. And then Rosh Chodesh is a time of Yitzchashut. Yesterday, Erev Rosh Chodesh is, is considered Yom Kippur Katan. It's a mini Yom Kippur. What does that mean? I don't want to think about Yom Kippur. I'm thinking about Tshuva and, you know, Gzerot and whatever. You know, like, makes you nervous. But really, Hashem judges us every month. Really judges us every day, right? Every night we go, before we go to sleep, we have to do tshuva. We have to say, Hareni solachat mochelet lechol mi sheichis veiknitoti kriyashma lamita. We begin, Ribbono Shalom, right? The, the whole tefillah is about, I forgive anybody who did any wrong to me, and, and I, I sort of, you know, I ask that they forgive me. And then there's some people, if you're a Sephardi, you'll say vidui. There's a vidui that said, um, it actually is part of kriyashma lamita. Why is that? And we say it also in our davening, right? Also, there's a there's a vidui that we sort of say after davening a tachanun. So that is the concept of doing tshuva. That every day we have to constantly like check up on ourselves, you know, like we have to make sure to like be in check and do what we need to be doing. And the inyan of the chodesh is also that that on the month, right? The month is the time of renewal. Hitchachut. We say in Shabbat mevachim we ask all different things. We ask for the geshem. We ask to be taken from Abdu Techerut, right? We ask for Refua. We ask for these things. Why do we ask for these things right before Rosh Chodesh? Because the Chodesh has the the capability, the potential to give us these things. And we hopefully, right before Rosh Chodesh, Yom Kippur Katan, many Yom Kippur, there's some tefillot, Ashkenazi, you have certain tefillot that you say, like Slichot even, right? I never I never said it because I'm sorry, um, we don't have it, but I think there's certain slichot, there's certain things that we say that it's like a type of tshuva. It's, you know, to actually reflect on what it is that I'm doing or I'm not doing, but not to beat ourselves up. And this is where we get things wrong. So really, we're in the time of choref. And we're in the time of darkness. And we're in the time where it's a little challenging, even though, thank you, Hashem, we're living in Eretz Israel. We don't feel the winter as much. It's been right this spring weather. Chazdei yeah. Hashem, even though we need the rain. Thank you, Hashem. Give us the rain. And uh, we should be zochet to it, but it's enjoyable. It's nice, but really, it's the darkest time, right? These are the past few months are the darkest time. These are supposed to be the months of the of the water, of the rains. Cheshvan, right? And then leading up to Tevet. And it's the darkest times because it's the shortest day. And so those, those are times that we don't feel that ability that koach to want to do and to accomplish it's like oh it's rainy oh it's dark oh it's cold let me go under the covers still for another hour or two if we can to allow ourselves that but you know we don't feel like doing we don't feel like actualizing and really this is what we have to work on because what hashem wants is that this is the time we're going to learn now chodesh Shvat is the time when there's this tremendous potential Okay, we actually went through the dark months. Tevet happens to be the month ruled by Esav. We know that the Poranut of the Choban Bet HaMikdash began on Asara Bet Tevet. There are three fasts, Asara Bet Tevet, Yudzayin Bet Tammuz, and Tisha B'Av. They're all connected. The Poranut started on Asara Bet Tevet. And we're told that if, Tevet, if Asara Bet Tevet would fall out on Shabbat, right, it wouldn't be postponed. It doesn't, right? We would, I would have to fast. We can't fast on Shabbat, but I'm saying... It doesn't come out, but the reason it tells it to us is because it's it's a really tr- it's like the time of Puranut, the time of you know the most you know challenging time because it began this concept of what we say that the Choban, it's really the beginning of the the downfall, it's the breakdown, the beginning of the breakdown. Like we have something we want to build, right? We have a foundation and we build upon the foundation. So every break breakdown also starts with something. There's also a system to a breakdown. But it actually comes right after Hanukkah, eight days after Hanukkah, Zot Hanukkah, eight days after Zot Hanukkah, which is the peak of Hanukkah, is a Sarabah Tevet. And why is that? Because we, we're gaining the light, the Orot, the Kochot, the, the Neshama, right? The connection, really, every person, we're not talking about Tevet, but I'm just mentioning it because it's really, it's important to realize this. 
is that every person is a mikdash ma'at. And when we're talking about, uh, you know, building, we're not just talking about building the Beit HaMikdash. We're talking about building ourselves. It's a time of itchachut, right? A month is the time to be able to rebuild ourselves and to be able to be more connected. And we are, it says, Hashem wants to rest amongst them. It doesn't say, He wants to rest upon us. The Shechira wants to rest in us. We're a, mini, a miniature Beit HaMikdash, a miniature Mishkan, so to speak. And we have to be working. One of the things I spoke about in Tevet, if you'd like to go back to my uh, group, I can send you, I have a, a YouTube channel. And I spoke about this, that this three-step process of working on our inner ratzon, our machshavot, which is connected to our inner ratzon, on our, um, on our emotions, connected to the heart, and our midot and our actions. And as we build each one of those, we're able to actually stop the choban from happening. This is the koch that we have. So that was Tevet, and it was really, it's ruled by Esav, there's dark times, difficult times in the Choref. Choref milashon cherpa. Cherpa is like busha. And really, busha is not a bad thing. Even the word shuva has the word shuv. If you take the word shuv and you spell it backwards, it's bosh. In order to do tshuva, you have to feel a certain busha, right? A certain shame, right? You have to have regret that I did something wrong. But not guilt. We often confuse this with the Jewish guilt. You know, I should have done that. Why didn't I do that? How could I have done that? And I beat myself up. I'm a good for nothing. I'm a this. How could I do it again? I failed again. I did it. And we constantly have this self criticism in our heads. We all do it to ourselves. Think about it every day. You just make a checklist. Just try. Every time it happens, you'll see how often we do the negative as opposed to thinking the positive. We just, uh, it's like our body just goes there, our mind just goes there. <laughs> it just goes to the negativity. It's like gravitating towards that. That's the Yetzirara. And we have to work on the positive. We have to work on really loving ourselves. Hashem says, no guilt. Shuva. Gives us the opportunity to rectify, to be metaken. That's the koch of every chodesh. Renewal. Because I'm a new person. I'm as if I'm reborn, so to speak. I'm being reborn. Hashem's giving me new opportunities. He's giving me the koch to be able to accomplish, to do. And this is what this month is about. We just came from the difficult month, and now Hashem is saying, ah, here, now it's the Chodesh of Shabbat. So what's Shabbat? We know, Tu B'Shabbat, Yigiyah Chag Ilanot, right? It's the time for the trees, the Rosh Hashanah for the trees, and we know that the trees are blossoming, right? Now the almond tree is the first one to blossom, that's why they sing that. I always wonder, like, why do they sing about the Shkediyah? I never saw a Shkediyah tree, like, you know, I see other fruit trees. And the reason is because the Shaked, the, the almond tree, Blossoms uh, first. First one blossom. Okay. There's one in the chish? We had one that actually. Wow. We had to build around it. Wow. 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 So really, shame is the first of like our primary emotion because we know from the time of Adam Arishon, from the Chet Adam Arishon. Is um, is you know when they when they first sin after they sin it says that they were boshashu and they were embarrassed right and then all of a sudden like they were like he was hiding Hashem had to say where are you ayeka you know before the sin they were also they weren't dressed they were awumim and there was no busha what happened it says that the yetzera came inside of them so to speak right before it was not part of them once they partook from the esadat. And now they were embarrassed of what they did. And so this busha, this um, this concept of having uh, embarrassment is is not necessarily a good thing, but it is a good thing. It's not supposed to be a guilt that we're supposed to be feeling, but in order to do tshuva, we have to feel that we did something wrong. And it's, a, it's humbling oneself. It's really humbling oneself. And we need to have this in order to do tshuva, like I said, bosh and shuv, to return. That we want to return to Hashem, we have to feel that Hashem, I did something wrong. But not to the point that we're beating ourselves up. But really to be able to, to build ourselves, to start anew. And to say to Hashem, I want to be with Hashem, I want to fix and to do the, step, the steps of tshuva. Is regret, azivat achet, stopping to do that, avera, making precautions, maybe not to do it, right? Sometimes we have to you know, help ourselves. And, and then to ask Hashem, Vidui, you know, to confess to what we did wrong. And so this, this is um, something that we 
you know, we actually attained from the time of the Chet Adam Arishon. So it's talking about, it's talking about Tu Bishvat. If you look at the trees, they're not blossoming right now. Like you go outside and the trees are not, you don't see fruits on the trees. It looks like they're dead. Mm-hmm. So what are you telling me now? Tu Bishvat Digiyah Haglein. Oh, very nice. You know, like, I don't see anything. What's going on? It's fall if it's winter. And, you know, I don't, I don't see that there's, no, there's nothing happening. Really, what are we told? Oh, I just spoke about you. I just spoke about Mashiach. You have to let me. I had to look in my eye. Like, where are we going? So we're we're told that that during the month of Shvat is when there's sap coming up the tree. The sraf, the sap, right? That's feeding the tree. It's coming up the bark, and that is feeding the tree. What does that represent? <laughs> That represents the tremendous potential, right? That there is potential. In order for something to happen, there has to have the potential to be actualized. You have to have something to make it happen. And that is the potential. And the tree is coming up. We don't see it. It's coming up from under the ground. It's dark, right, outside. Ain't nothing blossoming, right? It's cold, especially not here, but, you know, in other places. So it doesn't feel like there's anything, there's any growth. But in order for the growth to happen, there has to be something that's making it happen. There has to be potential. And this is the quach of this month, that we see tremendous potential. In a few months, we're going to see the blossoms and the fruits. And where did that happen? All of a sudden, it's like magic. So really, it's Hashem in nature. We know that the Teva is really the Hashem Elohim. It's the same gematria. That in Teva, within Teva, we, we see Hashem. But we have to notice it and we have to realize it. And this is what these parashiyot, we're in the parashiyot now, the times of Shovavim, which relates to Shemot, Va'era, Bo, Beshalach, right? Um, Ito, this is the time, and Mishpatim, right? The last one's Mishpatim. And so this is the time we're supposed to be working on ourselves. We're supposed to be rectifying. There's certain, you know, certain aspects, certain midot. Um, and it's a time for us to really reflect upon our connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And why this time? What are these parashiyot? These parashiyot talk about Mitzrayim. The tzar of Bnei Israel, the galut of Bnei Israel, the difficulty and the challenges that they went through. And here, last week's parasha, Hashem tells Moshe Rabbeinu, right? Ata yadati, now you'll know. Ata yadati, I think that's pasuk. Ata yadati, I remember the pasuk exactly. But now you'll know that what? Ani Hashem. Now it's going to be known to you. And he says it's name Yudke Vavke. Whereas the avot were known with Kel Shakai, before the avot were known, how could now? The Avot already knew Hashem. What do you mean now? Why now? Why are you telling me now you're going to be known? Hashem wasn't known before. Each one of the Avot had a Kesher relationship with Hashem. We dive in the spot of Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. Why now? Because now was Bnei Yisrael going into Galut. And now Hashem is going to reveal himself openly within the, you know, within the nature of things. The Makot, the Esel Makot happened, Right? It was a revelation of Hashem's glory in this world. It was showing everybody how Hashem is ruling nature. That it's not Teva. That it's not, you know, it's a complete Ashgacha of Hashem in for here. For, for who? For the sake of who? Why is Hashem doing this? In order to take Nezrael out of Mitzrayim? In order to get them to where? To Hal Sinai in order to make them his nation. Right? Banim Atem Hashem Elokechem. In order to make them his Am Segula. He wanted to give them the Torah and Hashem. If it wouldn't take us out of the Mitzrayim, out of the 49th level of Tumah, we wouldn't have even come out of there. So it was very clear that Hashem was doing this for who? For Kla Yisrael. So here, Hashem was making himself known for the sake of Am Yisrael. There's a certain Hashgacha, that's Hashgacha Prati, and a certain Hashgacha, that's Hashgacha Klalit, right? And here, Hashem was doing this private Hashgacha for Kla Yisrael. This was showing his love for Am Yisrael. And that's where Hashem Yudke Vavke is Hashem Rachamim. Hashem was showing his Midas Rachamim. Even though it didn't look like Rachamim, it looked like Din, right? It was happening. But we know that everything was happening was for the sake of Hashem. How does that relate to us, what we're talking about? That we also, we're in Galut. We're in Mitzrayim. We're in the Tzar. We're in the narrow place. And we don't always see Hashem. And it's very difficult, especially in Galut, with all the tzarot of Am Yisrael. We should, you know, we need refuot, we need yeshuot, shiduchim. We can list the problems, right? Everybody is in some sort of tzar. So we see that we really need 
We need Hashem and we need to see Hashem and we need to have that hope. We're in Galut. How do we get from Galut to Geula? There's an Aleph that's a difference. Galut is also Gola. If you look at Gola, the word Gola and Geula, the only difference between them is the Aleph. What's the Aleph? Aleph, alufo shel olam. Right? Hashem is kol yachod en od milvado. He is the only one that's going to take us out. But you know what Aleph also is? <laughs> the Aleph of Emuna. And who is the Emuna, the, those who have faith? Who are the ones? The Shoresh of Emuna? The M. The Imahot. We. The mothers are the, the place where people can turn to for Emuna. We're holding on to Emuna no matter what's happening. We'll daven, we'll say the Tehillim, we'll say the Nishmat, whatever you tell me, I'll do. Give it to me, I'll do it. For the sake of my kids, for the sake of Am Yisrael. We hold on to the Emuna. And what did B'nai Yisrael teach us? In order for us to be able to get out of the Mitzrayim, what did they have to do? Vayizaku el Hashem, right? Screamed out to Hashem and all these Lashonot. Rosh Hashem Pinkus tells us that there are 10 Lashonot, 10, I think it's 10, Sharim, 10 Lashonot, Sharim that are open with Tefillah, the words of Tefillah. We have Vayater, where it talks about Yitzchak and Rivka. We talk um, Vayizaku, right? Ze'aka, Ze'aka. And a lot of those Lashonot are found in these parashiyot about Mitzrayim. And when Bnei Yisrael cried out, that's when they received. So that's our emunah, emunah holding on that Hashem is taking us at. And where do we see that? In the merit of the women, they merited the geula, right? Why? Because they had hope. And we see it already from the beginning of Rashat Shemot. We're introduced to two women. We're called, they're called ha'ivriyot, the ones, the Hebrew ones, interestingly enough. And they were the meyaldot. They were the ones who helped to give birth to the children. And they made them live because we know what happened. They were commanded to make the firstborns had to die. Pharaoh made a decree. All the firstborns had to die, right? And what happened? They went and they saved the children. Pua, so the names itself represent what they did. They pacified, she pacified the child, right? Pua and Shifra, Meshaperet et Avlad, to improve, right? To make him feel better. And they were giving life sustenance because they saw that this is the legacy of Am Yisrael. And that we're not going to let them die. And they were the Ivriot. Why Ivriot? Who was called the Ivri? The one mi ever? Avraham Avinu. He was on one side. He believed in one Hashem and the whole world. the <laughs> Zara and everything else. And he had Emunah by Hashem. And they were Ivriot also. They were the ones that held on to the Emuna. And we know later on also the women the copper mirrors they brought to the Mishkan, right? And it was given to, to make to the Kiyo, the Kiyo to wash the hands, the feet of the of the Kohanim. The women, they understood what it means, the, the continuation of Am Yisrael. We too have to hold on to that. And we have to believe that even as dark as it looks in, in the midst of the winter, there's potential happening right now. Hashem's making things happen. He's putting me in a Mitzah. For what? For my growth, like a tree. It's for the ability to grow. And we see we're like a tree. So it says, Ki Adam et sadeh. Man is like the, the tree of the field. How is he like the tree of the field? There's roots. The tree has roots, right? Planted in the ground. It has a, a bark. It has a strong uh, tr trunk, right? To hold, him, to hold him down. It has the branches reaching out. And then from there are the fruits and the leaves that come out, right? So we know the fruits and the leaves. I actually have to read this because I read such a beautiful um, explanation about this and how it relates to us. Um, yesterday I was reading something on, in Chabad. That really we, we have this ability to, to be able to have the trunk, the branches, the leaves. All these things relate to us. It says the spiritual life of man includes the roots, a body, and a fruit. The roots represents our emuna. Isn't that beautiful? The roots are a source of nurture and perseverance. The trunk, the branches, and the leaves are the body of our spiritual lives, our intellectual, emotional, practical achievements. And the fruit, the fruit is our power of spiritual procreation, right? The power to influence others, to plant a seed in a fellow man, in a human being, and see it sprout, not only your own children, right? But you can give over Torah to someone, and you're, you're helping them to grow. You're helping them to be inspired. 
the roots are the least glamorous of the tree's parts and the most crucial, buried under the ground, virtually invisible. They possess neither the majesty of the tree's body, nor the colorfulness of its leaves, nor the tastiness of its fruit. Mm -hmm. But without roots, can a tree exist? No. Also, also the roots are its connection. Yes. So the Hashem is, is our connection. That's right. To source to life. That's right. And the roots must keep the pace with the body. If the trunk and the leaves of a tree grow and spread without a proportional increase in its roots, the tree will collapse under its own weight. On the other hand, a profusion of roots makes for a healthier, stronger tree, even if it has a meager trunk and few branches, leaves, and fruit. And if the roots are sound, what's going to happen? They're going to rejuvenate the tree, right? And and um, rejuvenate itself. And if the body is damaged or its branches are cut off. And so what's that? That's our imuna. He says, our imuna is the least glamorous of our spiritual faculties, characterized by simple conviction and commitment to one source. It lacks the sophistication of the intellect, the vivid color of the emotions, and the sense of satisfaction that comes from deed. And faith, where is it buried? under the ground okay it's true extent is concealed from others and even sometimes from ourselves we say why why do we say it's easy to see the chesed of hashem it's so beautiful it's so bright outside thank you hashem for all the good things you give me when i have clarity when i see it clearly but at night it's so hard to see it. what's night synonymous with chaos darkness, cold, right? Galut, when things are tzav, when things are narrow, right? Mina metzal karatika, from the narrow place I call out to you, Hashem. Aneni bamer chavka. Answer me in a place of openness, of open space. And so at night, I have to have a I have to believe. I have to understand that it's not happening. It doesn't look like it's happening, but it really is. The sap is coming up that tree. The potential is there. And what do we need to do? We need to actualize on that potential. We need to do something about it. So if you don't feel like doing, do it anyway. <laughs> Get up in the morning, do something. You know, it says you put on a smile, it sends certain hormones to your body. That like even if you don't, you're faking smiling, it still sends those hormones. So even if you don't feel like it, fake it till you make it. Just smile anyway. Even when your kid is getting you upset and doing it again and tantruming and you want him out the door, just. Oh, I tell the ladies, um, one of the things that we spoke about in our tefillah class, I give a tefillah series in Amida, and I learned something beautiful. Just having this awareness before you dive in, we have to have an awareness, a recognition that Hashem is here. Literally, Hashem is here. Like, why am I davening otherwise, right? Who am I davening to? So we know that in the Shulchan, Kitzvah Shulchan Aruch, he starts off, he says, you have to understand that Shiviti Hashem l'anagdik tamid. And what's Shiviti? Not only that Hashem is here, but I place Hashem here in front of me. Tamid, always. I have to believe that Hashem is in front of me. And so when things are not going so great, if you meditate upon this, just in the morning, just five, ten minutes, start off with five, ten minutes of just saying, Shiviti Hashem, Nagdi Tamid. Shiviti Hashem, Nagdi Tamid. I know you're here, Hashem. So when the difficult times come, say that to yourself again. It's going to be part of your subconscious. So I heard the uh, Yafa Devorah singer. There she is. Mm -hmm. she, so she spoke about this, how she learned this. And she was at the time, she had a bunch of little kids that are driving her crazy. And she tried to get them to sleep. You know those times when you try to get your kids to sleep? It's like the never ending story. <laughs> like, no matter what age they were, you know, I always like, Shama just helped me get these kids to sleep. Finally, I gave up. I knew it was just like, you want them to sleep at a certain time, and they're just going to go to sleep at whatever time they want, especially when they're all in one room, right? They have little kids. Anyway, so um, so she said one kid was, was she was saying to her, go, let's go to bed, let's go to bed, let's go to bed. She was little. And then all of a sudden, and she's just like, she was about to lose it. So she spoke to someone about this. She said, why can't you bring Hashem into those times when you're having challenge? Like you do Shiviti, you meditate on it. So bring him, bring it into when you're having the challenging time. So the child was like, no, I'm not going to bed, no, we're ignoring her or whatever. And all of a sudden, she was bad to lose. She goes, Shiviti! <laughs> you know, and she put herself into that consciousness. Instead of losing it, she caught herself. And her child just looked at her. And then she walked to her room. <laughs> she said it was mind-boggling. She couldn't believe it. Like, it actually worked? What are you talking about? You know? 
and and she said that's what it means that when you're focusing on that when you're holding on to that emunah that in the most difficult times right right we say it in the shema right after uh at night we say emet we don't say that during the day because at night is when you have to hold on to the emunah and the galut in the tzal, in the pain, in the difficulty, in the challenge. I wanted to share with you um, a beautiful thing. So we're told that the year is divided up into trimesters, similar to what? Pregnancy. Pregnancy. So the first part of the year, the first four months, starting from Rosh Hashanah, really starts from Sukkot, like 15th of Tishrei. <coughs> we count four months is what? Now, two Bishvat. We have 15th of Shvat. That's the first trimester. The second trimester is from Tu Bishvat, four months later. How does, when does that fall out? I'm not going to remember that. Maybe Sivan? Let me write it down. And, the, and then we have the third trimester. So the first trimester, really, what, what is the first trimester all about? When you have a pregnancy, it's hidden, it's the beginning, it's the conception, and the baby is you know that's the most you know um difficult challenging times that you want to make sure that the ubar is what do you call it um what fetus? yeah the fetus is like is stable right that the something's actually happening because it says that's the time that the lady is most apt to miscarry in the first trimester and so she has to be careful right you have to you can't do like major exercise and for some women or right if there were difficulties in the past you have to be very careful and also we don't talk about it we don't tell we don't share it with people and you don't see you don't see but what happens the next part the next trimester then already it's shown then the vlad is already takin it's already you know formed a little more formed and, and stable and so that's when the woman starts to show so people already you know maybe start to know or you start sharing it with family members because it's you know it's not such a, a precarious time so we're told that the first half of the year, right, is from Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is when the Gzardin, we promised Hashem what we're going to do and how we're going to actually, you know, be better, right? And we had now four months, Baruch Hashem, and hopefully we've worked on that. We've already tried to show Hashem that we're, you know, we're working on those specific midot or specific things that we said that we wanted to do. And on Tu Bishvat, excuse me, and to Bishva, we want to show Hashem that we're actualizing it, right? And it starts the next part of the uh, of the year, so that we have now the ability to show Kadosh Baruch Hu that we're actually the partial actualization that we want to do it. That's the next four months, and the third part is the full actualization, right? Based on what the beginning on the seeds that we already planted. So this is what the, how the year is divided up, and we know that. We're told this is one of the Rosh Hashanahs. There are four Rosh Hashanahs that are mentioned about a person, about different things. One of them is the Ilanot, one of them is us. But really, we said, Ki Adam es sadeh. So we're similar to the tree, and we're also, in a sense, being judged. And what are we being judged on? On our choices that we make, on the things that we're doing, on the things that we're actualizing. And we what the beginning now, during Tu what are we doing? We eat fruit, we make brachot, we're having gratitude. That we went through the first trimester and thank you Hashem, we got to here. So we have, we thank Hashem, we have now the fruits, we have now the fruits showing, coming out. And we want to thank Hashem for them. We're supposed to partake of fruit on Tubishvat and eat them and enjoy them. There's different, there's meanings to different kinds of fruit with the peel, without the peel, with the pit, right? Some you eat the peel, some you don't. Some you have to take it off to get to the inside. So there are different things about different fruits. And really it's a tikkun. We're gonna, if you want, we're going to be Zat Hashem doing a Tubishvat Seder. Um, I'm going to be doing it with Hashem Antu Bishvat, and we're going to actually talk about the meaning of it and the brachot and the and the essence. Last night we had a brachas party, and so spoke about it a little bit. You know, the concept of a bracha. A bracha is really mekora bracha. We recognize that Hashem is the source of all blessings, and it's very, very big. And when you make a bracha and you say Amen, you're creating malachim. You're actually creating malachim. And we have to really think about every bracha that we make, because a bracha is like brecha. It's like a it's like a spring overflowing. Right? There's so much abundance and goodness. And really, when you say, Baruch Atah Hashem, it's not blessed to you, Hashem. Hashem doesn't need our blessing. But we're recognizing that Hashem, you are the source of all blessing. Right? You're the source of all blessing. So here, we're talking about the, the concept of the, 
was I mentioning before? The, uh, it's a dat. So we're told Rosh Hashanah, it says in the Gemara, not Le'ilanot, it says Le'ilan. What do you mean Ilan? Not one Ilan. The tree. What's the tree referring to? It's referring to the Eitz Adat. What's What happened with the Eitz Adat? Right? That was the whole concept of when, when Adam Arishon and Chava, they partook, it says Hashem said to them, from all the trees of the of the garden of the garden you can eat, but from this tree you can't eat. And guess what they did? <laughs> you know, you tell the child, don't touch this. You know, if you tell them specifically, don't touch this thing. And what do they do? They don't touch that thing, right? So this is what they did. This was the the nachash tempted them, right, to believe that it's going to be okay. Not only to believe it's okay, he actually gave them the ability to think that maybe they're going to turn into gods, that they're going to be in control. So when they partook of the eight sadat, when they took from the fruit of the tree, they thought that they're going to be able to have more cost, more power. They're going to be like Elohim, right? And this is what we have to be mitaken. So this month has a, a faculty. Every month has a different midah, different faculty that it relates to, relates to achila, that we this month have to fix our ability to eat properly. And it doesn't only relate to eating. We're going to talk about it in a minute. But in order for what? In order to be metaken, chag la ilan, Rosh Hashanah, excuse me, la ilan, which ilan? The ilan, the etz, from the Garden of Eden. It's a dat. And we know we do this as women, we bake chala, right? One of the, one of the mafarshim say that the etz was, it's a chita. So when we bake chala, what are we doing? We're bringing more sustenance, life to our children. We're giving them from the, the kemah, which comes from the chita, which comes from the tree. Right? And instead of like Chava did, she, she gave him death because as a result of the sin, the, the curse was that they should die, right? They shouldn't live forever because Adam had the potential of, Adam stands for Adam, David, Mashiach. There was potential there for him to be the Mashiach. He could have lived forever if he wouldn't have sinned. That's why it says that Adam gave also 70 years of his life to David HaMelech because um, David HaMelech was supposed to die. Like after, I think, a few hours, right? So um, he said that Adam gave him like 70 years of his life. That's why Adam died at 930 instead of uh, 1,000 years. So in any case, so going back to what we're saying, so she brought, so to speak, death. So now she has to be metaken, that she is being metaken by bringing chala. Who is chala? Chala is like Adam. Chalato shel olam. Adam is like the chala of the world. That he... You know, we are supposed to have sustenance from this tree. We're supposed to be able to have, you know, goodness and life. And instead now, so she has to be metakin. So what do you do? When you make challah, there's a big inyan to daven. Every single one of the ingredients, I don't know if you know, represents something. Mine is representative of Torah, right? We didn't speak about that, but that's also related to this month. But we, the, the sign of the month is Dli. The sign of the month of Shabbat is Dli. Aquarius, we'll talk about it in a minute. So Mayim is supposed to be Torah, so Hashem help my children, they should be able to grow in Torah, my husband they should be able to learn Torah, they should always go in the ways of Hashem. And then we have the Kemach, it's a flower, it's a sustenance, give us Karmata and sustenance, and the oil is synonymous with like Mishichut of anointing, anointing the king, anointing the, the right, the Nevi'im and Mashiach. We want Mashiach, that he should be anointed. So in every one of the, thank you for coming, and every one of the of the ingredients, there's tremendous kochot that we're being metaken. And so when our children are eating, and our guests and our husband are eating from this bread, it's not stop just bread. It's food that we've elevated to a different level. And that's what we have the koach to do. This month, we have that ability to be metaken, the, the power of eating. The ot that relates to this month is the ot tzadik. And it says that a tzaddik eats le'ochel nafsho. He eats le'sofa nafsho in order to, to be able to satisfy himself, but really for the sake of who? The Shem Shemayim, to be able to serve Hashem. We know that any tzaddik, any gadol that you know, when he eats, he doesn't eat a lot, right? The babasali should be, it's Zulu Nishmata, it's Yartha, I think on Dalet, Dalet Shabbat, yeah. So uh, it should be also the Le'inu Nishmat of Yisrael of Bukhatsira, I'm hoping to go Bezrat Hashem. So give me names if you want. I'm going to David. So Bezrat Hashem, we, we want that this month, you know, the tzaddik, when he eats, he, the Rebbe Sali, he didn't used to eat a lot. He would fast actually most of the time. 
and when he ate, it was very small portions because they would just uh, had to eat for the sake of what? Just to eat, to be able to satiate himself so he has energy. We know what's in English, in Hebrew, what's calori calories, kaloriot is energia, right? Food gives us energy. And the reason we eat is to, yes, to have energy. We also need to have pleasure. We have to have pleasure. We're not going to just uh, eat things that are just healthy. We also have a piece of cake, right? We'll enjoy, you know, a, a nice ice cream or whatever. So really, we eat also for pleasure. And it really, it says, after 120, Hashem is going to ask us, you know, did you partake from the things that I gave you? Did you have pleasure? Right? And we're going to say, no, I didn't want to gain weight. I was watching like hell is, you know. So we have to be really careful in terms of what it is that we're eating. Yes, of course, we, we can have cake, but we don't have to have seven pieces of cake, you know. <laughs> you know, I'll just take a little more and take a little more, you know, the slivers. <laughs> so this is the month to be mitaken, that not only how much we eat, how we eat, and how we make a bracha before we eat, right? And really the choices that we make of what we're eating and why we're eating that thing. And if we don't eat that thing, how does it make us feel? That's also important. And so it relates not only to achila, it relates to other choices that we make. For example, a certain woman goes to the store and, or she wants, she goes online, she wants to order this dress. And she sees that, you know, this, this store has this dress and she's gonna go, it has it in her size. And she's, I'm going to get this dress. She goes to the store, they don't have her size. Are you sure? Can you check in the back? And she's like, no, I'm sorry, we don't have your size. So how does she react to that? What? Are you kidding me? You don't have my size? I saw it online. Can you check again? And she's like freaking out because she doesn't have her dress, right? And sometimes we do this, we lose something. And then we feel like, where is it? Where is it? I can't find it. I have to find it. What is that? A little bit, that's the control aspect. That's not throwing it up to Hashem. So we're told the whole concept of the choice of tov vera, that was what, we're, what happened with Adam and Chava. They were choosing, right? And that, all of a sudden, that came inside of them. The Yetzer Ara, the Nachash, right? Now became a part of who they were. The Yetzer was in us, that decision-making of, should I, shouldn't I, you know, is that okay, is not? So the tikkun of this month is, how do you feel if you don't have something? How do you react? Do you recognize that it's from Hashem? Maybe Hashem doesn't want you to have it right now. Maybe it's not good for you right now. Maybe that's not what you need right now. And oftentimes we think, but I need it. He's <laughs> like, I need it, <laughs> you know? Do you need it or do you want it? And so we have to make the right choices in how we eat and how, you know, we, when we want something, possessions, things that we have, and when we don't have what we want to recognize and to believe it's really emuna, to understand that I don't need to have that thing right now. I want to speak, I learned that, um... When we eat in an unrectified way, it affects three things. It affects our anger, our speech, mm -hmm. and our sexuality. Yeah, it all connects. So I heard also that the, the step, the process to all this is what are we really trying to achieve in all this? And in eating and making these right kind of choices in the right, in a healthy way is, you know, it's not like the be all and end all that everything's going to be lost if I don't have it. It depends how you react to something and what is that recognizing that there's a divine plan that if you have it or you don't have it if you lose it that you're really leaving it up to hashem that it's okay it's okay that's a tikkun and that's sadiq a tzaddik everything that he has you see the yaakov avinu pachim ktanim right he went back for pachim ktanim because everything for a tzaddik has significance to be able to what to serve hashem better and that's what we have to realize during this month is that everything that Hashem gives us is in order for us to be able to elevate it and to bring it to a higher consciousness. What's that consciousness? To be able to connect it to Hashem. Is this thing going to help me to serve Hashem better? Am I going to feel better, right? To be able to feel good, to be able to serve Hashem in the proper way, to be a proper mother. And sometimes even abstaining is also not good. We think we abstain this intermittent fasting, I'm not saying anything you know, good or bad, but like, I can't eat now, this is not my time to eat, I have to eat only these times, you know? Is that really what Hashem wants from us? You know what I'm saying? We have to ask ourselves that. It's like, no, I can't touch it. Now is not eating time. You know, like, 
I don't know, maybe for some people, yes. Maybe for some people it's an obsession, you know, eating can become an obsession, right? And people actually have to, you know, they have to work on it. But we have to really know that what are we doing? Is it elevating us? Is it taking us to a higher level? And this is the koach of this month, to be able to work on our khila, to be able to be like the tzaddik, to be able to serve Hashem, to do whatever we need, to be able to bring us to a higher consciousness, to be able to use that actualization of that potential, right? The potential we had now from Rosh Hashanah, from Tu Bishvat An, now we have to actualize. It's a partial actualization. And the end is a full actualization until we get to the next Rosh Hashanah. But now it's also starting. But what do we have to do now? Now we have to be in gratitude. Now we have to recognize all the brachas and the shefa that Hashem does for us. Right? And it's easier. Now this month you're going to feel a little more energized. It's sunny, it's nicer weather. And, and Hashem is going to give us those kohot exist. Every month has kohot in it. And we have to tap into those kohot. And how do we do that? Like I mentioned before, trying to work on our muna, davening, crying out to Hashem. More, but not from a place of desperation in a sense like, uh, you know, like, if you don't give this to me, I'm going to die. You know, like I can't. I can't live like this. Maybe sometimes we need that. But really from a place of gratitude. Because what is gratitude, really? We say, Mizmola to the Rabbi Rush says, there's a book, I'll tell you what happened. I, I started a Thank You Hashem group. I have over 200 women on a Thank You Hashem chat. And uh, they basically write Thank You Hashem for whatever happened that day. Sometimes it's not such great things. I actually had a lady once wrote, Thank You Hashem for uh, my miscarriage uh, when I had my eighth child. I see now two years later how Hashem was for, for the best. And Baruch Hashem, you've blessed me since then. And, and I see how whatever I went through then was for a good reason. I was like, looking at this, I was like, whoa. But this, what does it mean to thank Hashem? So how does this start? I started when I, I was living um, in Canada at the time. And I was going through my stuff, you know, everybody has their stuff. And um, basically, I, I went to, um, my parents had like a shul, and there was like Sfarim, the Rav Arusha on the floor. It was the time my father was in the hospital, unfortunately. Um, so I had to be in the hospital with Sukkot time. And so when we went to shul, I saw this book. It said, say thank you and see miracles. In Hebrew, it's called Amalti Toda Venoshati. And I'm like, what's this? I said, can I take it? I said, yes. Yeah. So I took it home. I started reading it. Story after story, I couldn't put it down. Basically, it was stories and accounts of people who had no you know, challenges in their life. And they thanked Hashem and they saw miracles. Women who couldn't have children. Uh, women who could, you know, had difficulty getting married. Um, people with health issues, also little crazy stories about, you know, cars that got stolen, like just different stories. And really, the people, what are they, Rabbi Rush was saying that the concept of when you thank Hashem, what does that show? And, and this is what happened. He said there's a couple who came to him and he, and he told them that they couldn't have children for many years. He said, every day for 30 minutes, I want you to sit and thank Hashem. They're like, excuse me? <laughs> You want us to thank Hashem that we don't have a child? Like, what are we thanking Hashem for? He said, Hashem gave you this nisayon. You believe that? Yes. So he gave it to you for a reason. We don't understand the reason. But thank you, Hashem, that this is what I have right now. And really thank you, Hashem, that Bezalat Hashem, it's going to be better. It's really having emunah. In gratitude, it's not that thank you for my suffering in the sense that I should suffer and Hashem wants me to suffer. No, this is for my growth. Remember we talked about the actualization of the potential? This is the potential. How many times do we see people, you look, you know, you, over time, different situations, who've gone through struggle, and then they go to give chizuk to other people, right? Mm -hmm. They start organizations, they start foundations. I was talking about um, Kobe Mandel, you know, mm -hmm. the Kobe Mandel Foundation, right? So he died of, it was terrorist, it was a terrorist uh, um, attack, right? It was mm -hmm. a home, it was very sad. Remember, we were davening for him. So his parents started a foundation. And they go around to be Masameach people. They have different things. And one of the things they have is like a comedy show that they go around and they're, they're, they make people laugh, you know, saying different situations and they help terror victims. You know, how many stories we have, you know, of different people who are in the tzav, who are in the, the narrow place, but they take it and they elevate others with it. And this is what Hashem wants. The sign for this month is Dli, Aquarius. What's a Dli? A Dli is a bucket. If we think about a bucket, in the times of Torah, you know, your kids come home with the Parsha, you know, the little Parsha project with the with the bucket and the well, you know, mm -hmm. remember those? When, when is that? With Rivka, right? When she went and she took from, from the well and she gave to Eliezer to drink and she gave his camels to drink. And then he knew that this was uh, the one that was destined for Yitzchak, right? 
What is that? What does the bucket do? The bucket has the ability to gather in the water, right? It says dole umashke. That's what it does. And really Eliezer is compared to that. He was dole. Dole means to take. He took from Avram Avinu and then he was able to give forth. He was the Talmud like of Avram Avinu. You know, Eliezer is not Stam a servant, right? Who well, he was, it was on a different level. So we're we're also, we're dole umashke. What are we taking? What's water? Water is Torah. How are we going to make all the things we're talking about, the achila, the choices that we make and all that? We need to bring Torah into our life. We need to connect the Torah. If we have Torah, then we could be mashke. And we have to have a vessel. We have to have the dli. The dli holds the water, right? We too have to become a vessel to hold the abundance that Hashem is sending down to us. When we dive in, we make ourselves a kli. We make ourselves, so to speak, a vessel. And we're asking from Hashem, and then we receive it, and then we give it to others. Whenever you learn something, I just heard this beautiful concept, Rabbi Nachman says, that when you learn something, you're becoming a kli kibul, right? You're, you're receiving, you're learning something. Take that and inspire others and give it to somebody else. Tell it to someone, right? Give it over, your children, your husband, your family, your guests. Why? Because then you emptied the kli, so Hashem can give you more. So when you have something, you say, thank you, Hashem. Give me more, because I want to give to others. I want to do with something with this. It's not just for my own selfish needs. We're dole umashke. We have to work on that. Through the Torah, we're able to do that. The Torah is a makor chayim. It's the source of life. And we see that, right? We see that everything in our life revolves around Torah, Baruch Hashem. We're Shomer Torah Mitzvot. You know, that's what we're called. The Jews call the Shomer, you know, they call them Charedim and Mesotim and the Tilumi and all that, but it's not. I was, people ask me, are you this, are you that? I said, I mean, show me the Torah mitzvot. I keep the Torah. You know what I'm saying? Torah is old fashioned. I'm old fashioned. I used to tell my students, I'm old fashioned. <laughs> I keep the Torah. The Torah is old fashioned. You know? Baruch Hashem. We have a mitzvah. We have to be proud of it. And not start with all the nuances and the new things and be like, oh, it's, too, it's modern. It's not modern. It's not into, you know, the times. No, we have to take from the Torah and learn the lessons and be able to give over. To others, so that Hashem could be mashke us. So, so I give the love mashke to fill and to be mashke to give over. And I heard something beautiful, which I didn't even you thought about it. So look at look at the words achila and shtia. What is achila? It has achal yud and a hey. Shtia, shata yud shat yud hey, right? And my husband said it's a little deep. It's very deep, so I don't have the whole explanation. But what is it? it has Hashem Hashem. In our chila, in our shtia, we have to put Hashem there. That I'm eating for the sake, l'shem shamayim. I'm drinking, l'shem shamayim. So I should have energy. So I should be able to be a better mother and a better wife. You have to sit down, make yourself a meal. I remember Rabbi Goldwasser so used to tell us, David Goldwasser Shlita, that lives in New York, and we were single, and we'd come to the shirim, and he would say, you have to make sure when you sit down to eat, you don't just grab something and walk around and eat. Take a plate and a fork, and sit down and treat yourself. And that's like funny to say that. But how many times as mothers we're cooking and eating, right? It's like, I don't have time. I have to like, you know, I have to cook, I have to, I have to speak, I have to make sure the kids are coming home, I have to make this, I have to make that. No, you're a human being. You have to sit down, treat yourself. Make yourself a nice drink, a shake, take care of your health, because that makes you a better mother, a better wife, a better daughter, a better person, right? You have energy, you have kochot, you feel good about yourself. You're a mensch. And really, what are you doing? You're doing it Hashem Shemayim. You're doing it so you could be a better you, so you could be a better person to serve Hashem. Even sometimes you want to dive in. You know, sometimes you're like, your mind is clouded and you're like, you can't. Did you eat today? Wait, did I drink? I didn't drink. I forgot to drink. Make yourself a nice drink and then go dive in. <laughs> right? And our whole mindset changes. So, this is the koch of this month. And we say, Shvat Yu Besorot Tovot, it also stands for Sanchem Barchem Taharem, which is nice. Hashem says, I will make you happy, I will bless you, and I'll purify you. And so this month, let's go out, make yourself a nice shake, go buy yourself a nice outfit, everybody in Yemima says, buy yourself jewelry, Shkedia, she says Shkedia, it's like a, make yourself a little Shkedia, make yourself a little necklace with beads or something, <laughs> you know, buy yourself something, make yourself feel good, you know, and this month try to think about ways that you can maybe rectify 
our choices that we make, our eating habits, and doing it, L'shem Shemaim, having more kavana. There's actually a beautiful tefillah. I brought it to show everybody. It's really like a Yehi Ratzon. You could make up your own Yehi Ratzon. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, right before you make something, you make food for your family. There's also a tefillah before making food on Shabbat. That really, Hashem, this food should be for my children's health, for their sustenance, my, my husband's health and sustenance. They should grow from it. They should be able to have koach. They should be able to connect with you, Hashem. Before you're making the food. Why? Because what's food? Food is your ability to function in this world. It gives you koach. It gives you energy. But we don't want just physical energy. We want to have spiritual energy. We want to be connected to Hashem. So that's what it means. So when you're before you're preparing the food, you can have that in mind. And there's a tremendous every day, all the time. And there's tremendous kochot. I'll tell you a quick story. And when this will end, I remember hearing once Rav Ben Lulu. He speaks on the radio al pine and he says, uh, he said one time he went to his grandmother, and he says, Safta, how come your food is always so good? Everything you make on Shabbat is so delicious. It's so rich. And she said, ah, Bani, you know, she's Moroccan. She said, oh, I wake up in the morning, on Friday morning, early, early, and I prepare all the pots. You know, I have the chameen, and I have the fish, Moroccan fish. You can't go Shabbat without Moroccan fish. That's me. I'm like, I have to have my Moroccan fish, you know? And I have my the salads, and I have whatever dishes that I have, chicken. So I take out a big glass of water, and I make a bracha. Baruch atah Hashem, and okeinu melech haolam, she'akol niya bidvaro. That everything is created with his word. And I drink a little, and she goes, Ani samak sad b'chamin, Ani samak sad b'oh, Ani samak sad b'salam. She says, she puts a little bit in each one of the dishes after she made a bracha. What is that? That's taking something, physical, food, elevating it. Bekdusha. Shakol miyavit v'ho. Everything is created with his word. And now you think that food's not going to taste good? It's a food for, you know, main olam ban Shabbat when you taste from the food. And that's what we do also. We say, Lichvot Shabbat Kodesh, when we're cooking, we're baking something. Because it's really not about me. It's really Hashem. You give me the koach, you give me the energy. I'm learning now, of course, the 39 malachos, Shabbos. I didn't want to take it. I was like, learn halacha, you know, it's so hard to learn it. It's not halacha at all. I'm so happy I'm taking it to Rabbi Lebinsky. If anybody wants, I'll send you the flyer. They're having it now it's together with Tamar Tabak on her Nexus School. Basically, he's talking about how Shabbat relates to the week. In order for us to prevent ourselves, right? We, we can't do malacha on Shabbat. You can't do this. You can't do that. But really, it's proactive. That It's by doing that you enjoy Shabbat. Really, it relates to six days. The world was created in seven days, but there's six days of the week. And we say every day, Hayom Yom Rishon Shabbat, Hayom Yom Shemiva Shabbat. And whatever we do, the malachot that we do, in order for us to understand what it means to abstain from it, not even saying it correctly, because it's very deep, but in order for us to understand the abstaining, we have to be active, we have to be doing, we have to be creating. And in the week, we already have to be preparing for Shabbat. Whatever we're doing during the week is really the preparation on Shabbat. And then we'll feel the Shabbat. We feel it, we feel it more. And the malachot take on a totally different meaning then. He was talking about it in a very deep level. So I was like blown away. I'm like, okay, this is what I need. So this is what it's talking about. It's really bringing Hashem into everything in our life. That's what this month is about. So Be'ezrat Hashem this month. Sh'yu v'sorot tovot. Sh'nizkeh li'shu'ot v'nechamot. And Hashem should, Be'ezrat Hashem, give you koach, energy, to be able to serve Hashem, to be able to be a better wife, a better mother, a better person to yourself. And and Be'ezrat Hashem, we should be zoch. And these months, those months of the geula. Right? And it's not for naught. By the way, I just heard yesterday a beautiful thing. From now, every two weeks, there's going to be a, like a happy time. So we have, I have to look at it. <laughs> we have um, Tu Bishvat, right? And the Chassid Shorab that says it. We have Rosh Chodesh Adar. Okay, so we have, it says, Rosh Chodesh Vat Mesugal Arbe Yeshuot. The Rebbe from Tzan teaches us. That it's a day that's very high in Simcha. Forgot to mention that Simcha, by the way, is really a Muna. When a person's with Simcha, it means that he's showing that he has a Muna because he's accepting, he's happy with whatever Hashem gives him. It's a tremendous time of Simcha. We said Halal today, right? So from today until Shavuot, every two weeks we're, we're rejoicing. So we have Rosh Chodesh Shvat, and two weeks is what? Tu Bishvat. And two weeks from that, Rosh Chodesh? 
Hadar. And two weeks from that, Purim, right? And two weeks from that, Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Two weeks from that, Lel Seder. Two weeks from then, Rosh Chodesh Iyar. After that, we have Pesach Katan. Two weeks from then is Rosh Chodesh Sivan. And then two weeks from that is Yom Matan Torah. And that's a tovah, a simcha gdola, she'en simcha lemala mimena, he says. And so we have to realize, even during this time, he says, it's not for not, I forgot to mention to you, the makot started during this month. And it's not sam, during this month, the shiftecha, I forgot to mention this, shevet is shiftecha, the staff, the stick. What does a stick do? It hits, it prods, right? The the shef, the, the ro'et son, what does he do? He prods his sheep. And it's interesting that Moshe is a shepherd. All the avot were shepherds, right? It's an order for what? To get the sheep to move. Hashem sometimes has to prod us. We see what happened in the trial. The Makot were for Bnei to wake up, right? To crawl out to Hashem so they could get out of the Galut, to get out of the Mitzrayim. So he says in this Chodesh, Beitumam she parashiot meleot be Yeshuot, Makot Mitzrayim, Yetziyat Mitzrayim, Kriyat Yamsuf, Bizat Hayam, Shirat Hayam, Haman, Anane Kavod, that were in the Midbar. How many Yeshuot, how many Brachot? This month, we're going to be reading Shabbat Shira. We're going to be reading the Az Yashir. So one last thing, Az Yashir Moshe Ubnei Yisrael. That's what they, when they went out, they said, Az Yashir, then he sang a song. Why Az? You should say, Achshar, Asharim, Asharim, we're about to sing. So Az is really then. Then, Latid Lavo. Then our mouth are going to be filled with rejoicing. Because then we saw, during the time of Kriyat Yamsuf, they saw the Egyptians also dying, right? And it says, but we don't say a full halal because they saw the Egyptians dying and in, in, you know, drowning in the sea, so we can't say a full halal. But then, when there's going to be already the destruction of the bad, and then the bad we're going to see as the good, we're going to be able to rejoice fully. Our mouth will be singing praises to Hashem, and then we're going to truly be singing the song. What song? The song that Atid Lavo, Mashiach is here, and Hashem Echad, Ushmo Echad. So we have to hold on to that. And this month, sing the song, sing the Zishma, say Mizmole Toda, and be able to see the good and the greatness of Akash Baruch Hu in our lives. Be the Simcha Bezrat Hashem. Thank you. No word was wasted. Everything was very positive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're so sweet. I love her. Thank you for joining. Thank you so much.